All right, folks, we are back here at the Reg A Money Show with Ron Costa and Miguel Dotris. You guys can check us out at regamoney.com. Miguel, let's get back into the show here. We were talking about social media and what we could do. Let's, let's dissect how this is done. Yeah. So, so let's talk about this from, a, from an aspect of the company first because I want you guys – I think there's two components to this, Ron, that we really need to break down for everybody. And, and you guys are listening to Miguel Dotrez and Ron Costa here on the Reggae Money Show. Uh, we're going to divide this up into two different segments. What I want to talk to you guys about first is the company side, and then what we're going to refer to as the investor, you know, the guy who is actually putting up the money in the offering, how, how we do that. So social media, social media has been a critical aspect of all successful reggae offerings to this point. Why is that, Ron? Because everybody wants to know how social media has, has evolved and, and also has taken a hold as the premier vehicle to be able to get the offering out there into the public because let's talk about let's talk about how this happens so so in the jobs act uh, under title under title four it allows you to, to advertise your offering to the crowd well then who is your crowd and how do you reach that crowd so essentially if you have a if you have an existing company right now and you've had investors fund your company what what you need to do is you need to consider re-engineering your investor list. Now, what does that mean? That means take a look at the people that you have currently on your investor list. Who are the guys who believed in you enough to write you a check to fund your company to this point? Because we're talking about the next evolution of your business, the next capital and in, 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 uh, infusion into your business to grow your business to the next level. So once you look at those investors and you kind of re-engineer them and find out, what makes those guys tick, you're going to have a really good understanding of who these investors are. Now, on the other side of that, what that does for you is it allows you to identify the particular person who is going to be looking at your investment in the right light, the guy who is going to be in the wheelhouse that this investor is going to be. So, like, let's say, for example, you are a startup craft beer uh, business, right? So you're doing a craft beer brewery, right? right? You're not going to look to try to get guys or investors who are in, in pharmaceuticals. You know, there may be one or two or a few outliers who are just looking to invest in anything that's reggae, but really you're looking for guys who are in the entertainment business, who are into wines and beers or independent breweries or independent vineyards, those are the type of investors that you are going to want to reach out to in this type of investment. So this is, so this is what is, uh, uh, you are looking for. So now your crowd, your, your, your social media campaign is now identified to who you are looking for. Not only are the existing people who are following you, and what I mean by following you, existing people, this could be everybody that's on your Rolodex or everybody in your user list or everybody in your email contact list. These are all the people that you have an influence over. These are the first, this is the first line of investors. This is where this, is where this group or this core crowd is built from, this this is where you start to build that, okay? And, and now the social media, and we're talking about Facebook, we're talking about Twitter, we're talking about Instagram, we're talking about all those platforms that allow you to, to engage people, users, to be able to share the information of your offering. Because under the Tier 2 offering, you're allowed to solicit everyone that you possibly can and let them uh, find an interest to whatever platform you're using. Either you're using a, a crowdfunding platform where your offering is being hosted or you're using a bookmaker or somebody who is, who is representing your offering on the street, which you can then drive the traffic there so that way they're able to take that information that you've garnered and, and convert to those people into investors in your company, and that's what we're talking yeah, and, about. And Miguel, yeah, Miguel, driving, driving someone, to, driving someone to a 
an investment portal is as simple then as just putting a link on your Facebook page. You have some information on there with the link. People follow the link, and they can go right there for, to, to invest. Absolutely. And those links, those links, Ron, are the links that I think are most important. Because as, you, as everyone knows, you know, as posting stories on Facebook and, and Twitter and stuff like that, you need to be hitting these people in two to three different spots. So you need to be oh, hitting no, them no. on Facebook. You need to be hitting them on Facebook. You need to be hitting them on LinkedIn. You need to be hitting them on, on Instagram, on Twitter, any different way that you can reach out to those people so they see that link in multiple times. And those links are retweet, they're, they're resent or retweeted yeah. or, or they're even, even mentions, okay, on other people's feeds. That's where you start to gain momentum. Now you're saying yeah, something to me, else, and I know it, yeah, something else we haven't mentioned either on this on um, social media wise is there's uh, there's YouTube out there which hosts videos. Of course, everybody knows YouTube, but YouTube is a phenomenal way for customers um, and and issuers to get a video out on their product, find out what they do. Like for example, the the Myomo deal that we talked about before. I mean, you know, six four four months ago, I didn't even know who Myomo was. Wanted to find out what they, what they were doing. Went to the YouTube video and uh, watched their video. They explained exactly what they were doing. And that's a great way to get people uh, you know, on board with what your product is and your services and how it all puts, puts it all together. It's amazing. So no, absolutely. Really, really, what a, really strong. Very important. And, and, yeah, and, and, and let me tell you, what a, better, not, what a better way of telling your story than actually seeing how your product or your story is portrayed in a video, you know, or, or, or how your story is portrayed in a mini film. You know, because I've seen these guys go all out and trying to do, you know, testimonials. Because, you know, what you're really going to need is you need that impact. You need that video, that link, that, that, that type of, of, uh, of information that people can grab a hold of and then make a decision on that. So, so that's, that's the company side. Now, on the other side of this real quick, Ron, because you're, you're, we're, we're talking here. You guys have tuned in to the Reggae Money Show with Ron Costa and Miguel Dotrez. And we're, and we're talking today about the importance of social media inside of a reggae campaign. And, you know, when you guys are listening and listening to the archives, you know that we always refer to the regulation A-plus Tier 2 because Ron and I believe that the Tier 2 gives you the most ability to, to access the capital markets because it re, the requirements are a little more, that, but it allows you to uplist your company directly onto an exchange. Now, let's talk about the investor. How do I reach my investors? How do I get from A to B? Now, this is going to be the key for anyone to have a successful uh, a reggae. These guys, these guys, these investors, we talk about Main Street investors, not Wall Street investors, but Main Street investors. These are the people that have never had an opportunity that the, that, that the Jobs Act, the crowdfunding, okay, the, the, all this legislation, all this SEC regulation, they have wanted to level the playing field. So now where the middle of the road, where Main Street meets Wall Street, all these investors that have never had an opportunity to even participate or sniff an IPO, because essentially this is an IPO, these investors are out there. They are looking for opportunities. They are looking for companies that are inside of their wheelhouse. They are looking for custom, uh, companies that they can invest in, and you have to go out and reach these guys. And these guys, you're going to find that a lot of these guys, okay, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of information that's out there, and you guys can check out the reg, uh, reggaemoney.com site. There's a lot of information there that tells you that a lot of your customers and vendors and your, and your circle of influence in your, in your social media platforms are the first line of investors. And then what happens to that? It's the rule of seven. You start to go to the rule of seven. You reach out to those people, and they start to reach out. That's why all of the components that you put together for your social media should have a link back to where the offering is being hosted, be it on a, be it on a mm-hmm. crowdfunding platform or be it at a, being hosted at a bookmaker or, or a market maker on Wall Street. But what I'm trying to explain here is that for the first time, Ron, in over 25 years, the, 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 the playing field, because you've got to remember, before an investor to participate in, a, to, to participate in a company that wasn't publicly reporting had to do that through a PPM. 
And the only way that right. you could send, you could, you could solicit anybody you wanted under PPM, under Form D, okay? It's called Form D, under the Securities and Exchange Commission. The only way that you could do that it was by doing an investor questionnaire. And that investor questionnaire would rule out about 80% of the people because, you know, maybe you're, you may have, maybe had, you know, like let's say, you know, Cousin Larry wanted to give you 100 grand. But then you would have Cousin Larry do the questionnaire, and Cousin Larry would say, well, no, Ron, I, I don't qualify because, you know, I'm not, I'm not north of a million dollars of, of net, uh, net value. You know, I don't have a combined income of $250,000 or $350,000. Yeah, that's, that's where the term accredited investor comes into, right? Exactly. So you couldn't take a credit, you couldn't take non-accreditor uh, investors' money. So now, now what does the company do? The company now is actually has their hands tied behind their back because they got a guy who wants to give them a check but can't take that check because of the rules, right? But now under crowdfunding, under, under Title IV and Title III of the Jobs Act, now that same uh, uh, cousin Larry, Uncle Larry, is able now, as long as you have your your Reg A Tier 2 uh, Plus, I'm sorry, Reg A Plus Tier 2, I'm sorry, uh, I got I got a little confused there. Uh, but as long as it's, at, it's uh, qualified by the Securities and Exchange Commission and, and Uncle Larry uh, is not using more than 10% of his net income to, to fund you, now you can take Uncle Larry's money. You can take anybody's right. money that you want as long as they're not, as long as they're compliant with the rules of the 10% which there are limitations, but it only limits the investor, not the type of investor, but only the amount of that investor's risk. The, the risk is only limited. So the Security and Exchange Commission decided, you know what, because these are not, you know, your everyday investors, we're going to limit their risk and not let them put their entire life savings into a project and then lose it. Because you got to remember, regulation tier two offerings are highly risky investments. Even though there could be liquidity, and even though that there's, they're, they're qualified by the Securities and Exchange Commission, you do have to realize, like all types of investments, you know, there is the risk for total loss. And, you know, I, I, I say this to you, to the companies out there that are listening to us, and to the investors that are out there listening to the Reggae Money Show, you guys must do your due diligence. You must look at each and each, each individual deal on its own merits. Now, listen to what anybody is telling you, and you have to do the due diligence. And, guys, if you're, if you're a company, you need to do your audit, and you need to present all your financials and all your MD&A, your, your, your uh, management disclosure and analysis. You need to be able to inform your investors, and you need to stay updated with your investors because that's a very important part of this whole entire social media because you're going to reach out to them, they're going to connect with you, and once they're connected with you, you have to communicate with them. And that opens up a whole nother show, Ron, which I want to talk about, which we might bring on maybe a market maker or somebody from the SEC about the rules and regulations of how much and how much or how little can you tell these investors once they've come on and, and become an investor in your company, how much you can and cannot tell them and how much you can or, or will not be able to disclose to them. So that's another whole show that we can do. But I think we kind of wrapped it up today, Ron, and, and, and just – you know, guys, I know it's a lot of information. You can always go onto our website. We're going to give you all the information on how to get to the website, how to listen to the archive shows. But you got to remember, there's two components to the social media aspect, the business and the investors, and you have to be able to leverage all the links on all the social media uh, platforms that your company is participating. So that way, not only can you reach your existing circle of influence, but how to reach beyond that and re-engineer those investors so that way you can really understand the investors that you're looking for. Yeah, and the companies that do that well will be the successful companies, and that's the way Reg A works. So, yeah, Miguel, a lot of information on this show. This is real great. Uh, if you're out there, you're listening to the Reg A Money Show with Ron Costa and Miguel Dotris. We can be found at www.regamoney.com, R-E-G-A money.com. Or you could check out our news site, which is ipo2go.com. We post a lot of news articles on that as well. And lastly, we're on Spreaker. We're on Stitcher. We are on iTunes. You could follow us from any of those locations. Go out there, check out the Reggae Money Show, tell your friends, and we'll continue to bring you shows 
regarding reggae with some really great information just like you heard today. So thanks a lot for listening, and we'll see you all next week. Take care, everyone.